applied conversation here. Uh, if you like the content, please like the video and subscribe for more content every month. Um, today, I will be reviewing my new book, The Last Revolution, A Teenage View of Modern Politics. Uh, it is now available on Amazon.com, and it will soon be available on Kindle, so check that out. Uh, my book was published through CreateSpace, a self-publishing tool that is, I believe, through Amazon. Uh, they made it all very simple. They outlined everything that you need to do to get your final product ready for sales. And so far, I've had no trouble with them at all. Um, now to my book. Uh, my book is just starting out. Um, it is about politics. It is also about history and also some... Um, some philosophy tied in there as well. It starts out talking about history and then it moves on to realistic expectations for the next 50 to 75 years. And then after that, it talks about the idealistic world which we may live in if we follow the guide of the Enlightenment thinkers. Um, so, beginning with history, I move through the history of. Um, rebellions and revolutions and how those slowly approached better and better forms of government. Um, I talked about earliest revolutions um, in Greece, uh, Roman revolutions, uh, Egyptian revolutions, uh, and then I move on to um, more recent revolutions, maybe um, Middle Age rebellions against the Roman Empire, uh, things that kind of br broke up the size of government. And then I moved on into modern revolutions. Um, I included the American Revolution, uh, the Texas Revolution, the American Civil War, uh, and many other notable rebellions in there. Uh, next, I moved on to realistic revolutions. I uh, put this into two separate categories. I made real or uh, revolutions that were more founded in conservative principles and my next section was focused on more liberal principles. Um, the conservative section was focused mostly on the Constitution but also on the nature of man and how that is shown in government today. Uh, for the liberal section I talked about the destruction of the two-party system which has haunted America for centuries and centuries, and I also talked about um, see, getting money out of politics and also um, having more fair elections, not based on name recognition, name recognition, but rather on merit and policy ideas. Uh, moving from there, I moved to an idealistic world. Um, in this idealistic world, my basis, um, it put more stress on communal governments and the rights and responsibilities that people should have within those. Um, I believe firmly that uh, the greatest right of any man or woman is the right to choose their own government. Today, due to the lack of federalism and the lack of general knowledge, I think, on the on the most part uh, for the public, uh, it has led to less options. Uh, people believe that they must always run to the federal government for help, and therefore millions and millions of people do not have a say. It's kind of a reign by the terror of the majority, and the minority is often suppressed in that, although the founders did have certain um, safeguards in place. Uh, so in also in this idealistic world, I talk about the state governments and their role in um, maintaining a certain degree of morals. I talk about the federal governments in their uh, protection of their citizens and kind of the animosity and how that actually helps to bring about more safety and less corruption in government. Uh, I talk about on an international scale, not having a government, but having a forum for discussion 
and this would allow for um, an end to war in the sense that we know today. Uh, I talk about a variety of issues that can only be resolved through discussion and they're going to be solved very gradually. Um, these include um, discussion about nuclear weapons and discussions about transparency. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description below about where you can buy my book on Amazon and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye.